everyone thank you organizer for having me here for the kind introduction my topic for today is diabetes in pregnancy management so diabetes in pregnancy the flow of my talk will be like screening how to screen what are the diagnostic criteria how will you monitor and then management and long term follow up so we know that diabetes in pregnancy it could be either overt diabetes mellitus that patient already had diabetes whether it is type 1 or type 2 and second there is gestational diabetes mellitus means the lady did not have diabetes prior to pregnancy and in the due course of pregnancy the patient got to know about the diabetes so regarding the management of diabetes in pregnancy first of all the glycemic control should be better it should be less than 6.5 hba1c prior at least 3 to 6 months prior to conception oral anti diabetics should be switched to insulin if it is required then there should be evaluation of retinopathy and nephropathy because if the patient had already moderate to severe retinopathy and laser has been planned then the patient has to wait for pregnancy and anti vegf drugs that we know they are not uh, suitable for pregnancy they are contraindicated in pregnancy likewise if the patient has egfr less than 60 or there is macroproteinuria then there is high risk of pregnancy complications to the mother as well as the baby so the complications of diabetes should be evaluated blood pressure should be well controlled and we know that ac inhibitors arbs and diuretics they are contraindicated in pregnancy and they should be stopped and the drugs which are safe in pregnancy that are labetalol or methyl dopa or cc calcium channel blockers that could be continued for the management of blood pressure statins are fibrates they should be discontinued and they are contraindicated in pregnancy and 5 mg folic acid it should be given to females at least 3 months prior to conception so we know that whom to screen we know from the guidelines that high risk patients whether obesity or overweight they are or women with pcod or high risk ethnicity females who have cardiovascular disease or hypertension first degree relatives with diabetes and conditions which are associated with insulin resistance like pcod or obesity they are to be screened but now the guideline says there should be universal screening because of the high risk of diabetes in population and in the first visit in the first visit females should be screened for diabetes so first screening if negative then you should screen for at the end of 24 to 28 weeks for gestation so ideally at the first visit whenever pregnant women comes to opd she should be screened for diabetes and if it is negative at the first screen then at the 24 to 28 weeks so in the first trimester if the patient has any of the cutoffs like fasting more than 126 or random more than 200 or a1c more than 6.5 then it is overt diabetes in the first trimester if the cutoff is fasting of 92 to 125 then the patient has high risk of gestational diabetes suppose in the first trimester the rvs is normal for the patient that is fasting less than 95 then you should screen for uh, diabetes at 24 to 28 weeks there are many criteria but ada recommends ia dpsg criteria which is one step approach in this pregnant females at 24 to 28 weeks should be given 75 g glucose ogtt should be done either of the value if fasting more than 92 1 hr glucose more than 180 or 2 hr glucose more than 153 if any of the value is positive then the patient has gestational diabetes but acog recommends two step criteria that because every pregnant female can't do fasting for long so you should do plasma glucose after 1 hour of meal if it is more than 140 then you go for two step fasting criteria that is 100 g glucose and you see the criteria fasting more than 95 or 1 hour more than 180 or 2 hour more than 155 or 3 hour more than 140 so these are the cutoffs given if any of the two values are positive then the patient has gestational diabetes it is according to acog criteria but ada recommends one step criteria which is by a iad psg so if the patient has diabetes whether it is overt diabetes or gestational diabetes how will you treat first of all diet and exercise they are the backbone of the diabetes management regarding diet in diabetics patient medical nutrition therapy is there 
carbohydrates you should restrict but carbohydrates should be at least 35 to 45% of the total calories they should not be restricted too much because it can go to starvation ketosis so 35 to 45% of the calories and you should ensure that there should be at least 1600 kilocalories of the diet in the pregnant females regarding exercise moderate physical activity should be done for 30 minutes a day and ACOG recommends that pregnant females should not do more than 45 minutes of exercise at a stretch because it can increase fetal temperature. So moderate activity at least 30 minutes a day it could be aerobic exercise or not weight bearing exercise. Suppose blood sugars are not controlled with diet and lifestyle then there comes the medicines and in pregnancy drugs and insulin many guidelines recommend insulin first. And even ADA 2023 recommends insulin. If the blood sugars are not controlled with diet and exercise, you should go for insulin. And there are some conditions, then you can uh, go for some drugs. In the drugs, only metformin and gliburide are recommended in pregnancy. So, how to initiate insulin first? Then we'll come to the guidelines. In the pregnancy, for basal insulin, NPH and Detamir are recommended. And for the postprandial glucose, Short acting insulin like regular, Lispro and Espart are recommended. So these insulins are recommended. Nowadays also Degludec has been approved by the uh, new trial and then Degludec is also approved in pregnancy. Earlier Degludec was not approved in pregnancy but in this year Degludec has got approval in pregnancy and Lantus that is Glargin U100 there are not much studies but the guidelines say if the pregnant female if the female is already on uh, Glargin 100 and the female gets pregnant then you can continue Lant uh, Glargin 300 Glargin 100 and in Glargin 300 there are not much data in pregnancy. So expect trial it uh, tells about that Tegludic which gets approval by the expect trial in type 1 diabetic patients who were on Degludec and Espart, they have comparable results as compared to Detemir. So Degludec, it has no adverse effects in pregnancy and by the EXPECT trial, Degludec gets approval. Regarding one slide on insulin analogs, they are more flexible. They have better control of postprandial blood sugars. They cause less hypoglycemia but if you talk about HbA1c control or glycemia control they are similar to regular insulin but they have only features that they control postprandial somewhat better and the flexibility of timing is there. Patient can take 5 to 10 minutes prior to meal but regular insulin you have to administer at least 30 minutes prior to meal. Regarding drugs in diabetes GDM patients like metformin many guidelines they recommend that Metformin can be given if the patient is not ready to take insulin then you can give metformin but be ensured that the pregnancy is more than 20 weeks or the fasting blood glucose is not more than 110 or the patient has not any cardiac or renal uh, compromises there and even ADA recommends that if patient is not ready to take insulin, insulin is preferred but if patient is not ready to take insulin you can consider metformin. So there are pros and cons of the insulin therapy. Insulin, it is oral drug. It is insulin sensitizer. There is very less chance of hypoglycemia. And you can give insulin, but it has somewhat risk also because it can lower gestation age. It can cause preterm birth in some studies. But if the patient, uh, if the gestation age is more than 20 weeks, you can give insulin. So for insulin, you can consider it if gestational diabetes is not uh, controlled with medical nutrition therapy and fasting glucose is less than 110 and patient has poor compliance or refusal to insulin, you can take uh, metformin and suppose insulin requirement is very high, maternal weight gain is very high, you can give metformin but in the early gestation, if it is Three months of gestation, avoid, try to avoid insulin. If the patient has gastrointestinal issues with metformin, try to uh, avoid metformin. If the patient has allergy to metformin or if the patient has any renal or hepatic compromise, try to avoid metformin. If the fasting glucose is more than 110, try to avoid insulin and counsel the patient regarding the uh, met insulin. Try to avoid metformin in those who have history of major congenital issues in the prior pregnancy or the 
patient who has history of mater uh, hydramnios or the maternal distress is there then you should counsel patient that she should avoid taking metformin these are the contraindications of metformin like congenital anomaly in the prior pregnancy or hydramnios or there is fetal distress or the fasting glucose more than 110 then you should give insulin so metformin definitely it can cross placenta and it has safety profile there are many data we are using metformin since a long metformin is low is of low cost and its use is being increasing rates of macrosomia it is similar as with metformin uh, means insulin and metformin they have similar rates of macrosomia but in mig trial that is metformin and gestation age trial it has been shown that metformin can cause increase in the risk of preterm birth and metformin can cause lower gestation age infants and the infants who were delivered to mother who were taking metformin has high bmi so there are pros and cons of the metformin therapy you should discuss with the patient but definitely if the gestation is is more than 20 weeks you can consider metformin if the patient has no history of any prior malformation of the fetus or the patient has no any uh, maternal or fetal distress. So the cutoffs, cutoffs in pregnancy are quite different from the normal diabetic population. In fasting, it should be less than 95. One hour postprandial, it should be less than 140. Two hour postprandial, it should be less than 120. And HbA1c. If it is less than 6 and it can be achieved without the risk of hypoglycemia, it should be less than 6. So the cutoffs of pregnancy, it is different from normal diabetics population. The cutoffs in pregnancy are stringent and the that cutoff is high. Even these uh, CGM based data are there. How will you monitor glycemic control? You can monitor with the self monitoring of blood glucose. You can monitor with the fasting, pre meals, post meals, and late night 2 a.m. to see whether the patient can go in hypoglycemia. And now there are data from the CGM, continuous glucose monitoring. In continuous glucose monitoring, there are data with the pregnancy in type 1, but there are no data in the pregnancy type 2 or gestational diabetes. In pregnancy type 1 only there are CGM cutoffs that it should be more most of the time it should be within 63 to 140 at least more than 70 percent of the time. Regarding intrapartum glycemic control oral antidiabetics should be con discontinued and adequate hydration should be there. Blood glucose should be in between 72 to 126. Insulin infusion should be used if required. And IV dextrose with insulin can be given to avoid the risk of hypoglycemia or the starvation ketosis. And in the postpartum management, after the delivery, if the patient has pre-existing or overt diabetes, patient may need antihyperglycemic therapy. Insulin dose may be modified and the cutoffs are same as in normal diabetic patient. In GDM, therapy should be lowered and most of the time, Oral antidiabetics or insulin is stopped and glucose is monitored for 2-3 days and then it is important that after 6 weeks to 12 weeks you should do OGTT to see that GDM patient can land up in type 2 diabetes. Regarding lactation, many of the drugs like metformin, sulfonylurea or thiazolidine deons you can use with caution. But GLP-1 receptor analogs are contraindicated in lactation. SGLT-2 inhibitors are contraindicated. Regarding DPP-4, you should use with cautious. One drug which is quite safe, that is lenagliptin, you can use. And sexagliptin has shorter life, half-life. You can consider it using. There should be long-term follow-up of gestational diabetes. Lifestyle is important. You have to counsel that almost 50% of the GDM patient can convert to type 2 diabetes. So there is lifelong screening and if the screening is negative, you should counsel. The patient has to be screened for 3 to 5 years. So there is uh, development origin of health and disease. There is fetal adult origin of adult disease. That if there is childhood obesity, patient can go in adult metabolic syndrome, patient can have diabetes in pregnancy and if the patient has GDM in pregnancy, the fetus is affected, fetus can have metabolic syndrome. So there is vicious cycle, there is in childhood obesity, adult metabolic syndrome, preg pregnancy in diabetes and then fetal metabolic syndrome. So it is vicious. So pregnancy, diabetes, it has to be taken in cautious and there should be strict management. So to summarize, 
recognize that patient has diabetes screen universally good glycemic control is important for the mother and fetus ddm it identifies the group of patient who can have uh, pain children with high risk of diabetes and premature cvd long term follow up is important and lifestyle management is best for the mother and the baby so thank you for the patience